Hey guys, this is Jason from SoCal Accessories. Today I'm going to be showing you guys step by step how to install the Rough Country MLC6, the six panel uh, rocker switch that's for the Jeep uh, Wranglers. Um, I'm going to explain to you guys what I already did, how to take stuff apart. I wasn't really going to make a video for this, but I had something where I didn't think it was connected correctly. Um, so I wanted to explain what happened on mine. You guys may run into the same issue on yours, so that way you guys know what to do. All right, you guys, so for the interior, first thing you're gonna wanna do to make this install easier is remove the, the front two panels. So to do that, if you guys don't already know, you just unlatch both of those back. You twist this. You have another one right there that you twist, there and there. So you have uh, one, two, three, four of those total and two clamps in the front to remove this roof. And then you have two knobs right here that need to get removed. If I took one of them off already, the other one's right there. All you do is twist it counterclockwise to remove that. We're gonna take those off right now and then I'll explain to you guys how I took those panels right, off. You guys, so after you take off those two panels, you got a T20 right here. You're gonna take those two T20s off and then you unclip this and this visor is gonna be removed like this one's already removed. Uh, you don't have to remove the one on this side. I'm just showing you guys what I did on the other side. And then to remove this panel, if your guys this has the microphone for the Bluetooth right here. Um, don't forget to disconnect that when you guys remove it. Besides that, this basically just pops off. So the only thing holding mine was this clip right here that you pull down on. Besides that, there's one more clip in here. That's uh, like a Phillips screwdriver. When I was removing mine, I was removing it. I twisted like 20, 20 times with a Phillips screwdriver and it would not come off. So for some reason I got a uh, power tool, I put that to loosen it and it came out right away. Um, because these plastic clips, when you remove them, when you remove them, when the part comes out from the middle, basically you can't really be pushing pressure in like you do with a screwdriver. So with the power tool, it was way easier. Um, so if you guys get frustrated doing it with a hand tool, it's probably gonna be like mine where it doesn't wanna come out, just use a power tool. For me, that thing came, took it out in like two seconds. Off, I, I pulled this down. Um, you'll see the little clip in there. I don't know if you could see it on the camera, but there's a little clip in there that holds it in. That white clip, you can kind of see it on the camera right there. So you just pull down on that. That's gonna remove this. And then before you pull it off, don't forget to unplug this if your model has that uh, microphone right there. Besides that, you don't really have to remove this side panel, it just makes it easier to run the harness. So as you can see, to pull this out, is basically just that metal clip right there. So what I did is I just, once this panel was off, I put my hand in there and yanked it out this way. So as you can see where it's angled, the slot's right here. So you wanna pull this way, don't pull back this way, don't pull that way towards, this, towards your steering column basically on that one. You pull basically out this way towards you and then that whole panel comes off. And then to pull these this down, it's clips. You pull it, you pull down on that. Um, let me see if I could get somebody over here to uh, help me. So basically just clips. So those pull down, which is kind of cool because now I'm gonna be able to hide my wire better than it was for my uh, dash cam also, now that we're removing that. Once we remove that, we have to remove this bracket which is gonna come off with uh, two T25s. I'll remove that and then um, I'll show you guys on the So there's switch. another bracket that comes in the box that's for 0708 Wranglers. Um, the one that's already on here is the one, the second bracket that's for the 09 to 2017 or it may be uh, newer than that, but it's set, advertised 09 to 17. The one I'm putting it on today is this 2017. So we're gonna be using the bracket that's already on here. So you're gonna to wanna to remove these two Phillips screws after you remove the, the T25s for that bracket. And then those T25s, you're gonna reuse them when you put this on. So I'll show you guys right now. All right guys, so when you remove this, there's two little clips right there that may be holding on on yours. On mine, when I pulled this down, they just came out. Um, but if they are still stuck on yours, you just pull those up and they detach themselves. Now I'm gonna remove that center footman, you don't need to remove the outer ones, you're just removing that center one with the T25. All right, you guys, so after you take off this bracket from the six panel switches, 
you put it on with the footman's loop over it. And then you need to put this piece in, so line this up with that hole. You put it on right there and you're going to need to trim it so it could pop all the way in. So I'm going to get a white ink marker and I'm going to just put a little line where I need to cut it. And then I'll be trimming this with a Dremel. So with the ink marker, I just put a little dot so I know how far out I got to cut. Alright you guys, so as you can see, it clears now. And when I test fit it, I pushed it all the way in until I clipped in because I want to make sure that it clears that I did cut deep enough. I didn't want to cut too deep. Um, so I barely cut enough so that it, as you can see it, it barely clears. So I cut that out with a Dremel. I went down and then I went this way on both sides. And it fits good now. So now I'm going to tuck these wires back in. I'm going to get the harness that I have here and tuck this in. I'll show you guys where I ran this right now. Um, but first let me explain this to you guys how to tuck this. So all these wires have to basically be behind here. We got to plug this into the rocker switches. And then I'm going to have, uh, once I push this back in, I'm going to have somebody hold it while I put these two screws on top. All right, you guys, so when you put this in, you guys want to make sure that is tucked into this dash because it will not fit in here. So tuck that in first and then put it somewhere where it's going to clear and then push this back in to clip right, it. Guys, in so place. when I was going to put it on right now, uh, I noticed this was a little bit too close to this. So I loosened it up and I'm sliding it over as much as it goes to the left. So it gives a little bit of a gap right there. So when I put this on, this piece will go all the way forward. So I'm going to end up trimming this slightly more to the left and then putting that plastic back on. And I'm going to tighten these back up right now. All right, you guys. So the box has to tuck in like a specific spot right here to actually clear for this to clip all the way in. Um, once you do that, um, these this bracket was sagging a little bit. So when I put the screws, they weren't holding. So what I did is I pulled this side out, picked it up. I picked it up with my finger and then on this side I put my thumb in here and I lift it up so that this could actually grab the nut inside of there. So now as you can see that part is on. For this part I'm going to put back this panel now. Um, when you put the other side on you slide it into there first so that it goes this piece tucks into the other part. I'm going to pull this access wire down there and then I'll show you guys, uh, don't forget to plug, plug back in your speaker, I mean your uh, microphone if you guys have one. And I'll show you guys what I do next. All right, you guys, so the side panel comes off so you can run the wire from here. And the part that's going to run to the outside is a skinnier white plug. You have a hole right there through the firewall where you could see that it's running up to. It's a pretty big hole right there. Just push it through there. Just run the wire and tuck it wherever you're going to tuck it, whether it's here or here. I still got to zip tie all these. Um, but the skinnier white plug for that main harness is this one. So to mount this plate, what you're going to do is there's two tens. You remove these two tens. You put the plate and you put them back on. Um, when I put it on, I push it all the way forward that way and then put them on snug then I tightened them up um, but before you tighten this plate up what you want to do is I left it loose at first so that I could run this through otherwise you can't fit it to get it down here um, you run this through first plug it in run the power one at least because these two are, are really hard to get to once you mount this plate for the stuff on this side like the ground and these cables it's easy to get to um, even without it. For these, I suggest tightening them by hand, not with a power tool, because this is a regular circuit board, like on computers and stuff. You don't want to end up doing it with a power tool and, and cracking or breaking that. Um, but anyways, the harness plugs to here. Um, this doesn't look like it does on the website. It has this extra harness right here. At first, I didn't really know what it was for until the end of the instructions for Rough Country, where they explain if you don't want your lights or your switches to always have power that you could run this to an ACC power source. So I'll explain that to you, but first let me explain my switches. So on there it tells you what switch number basically it is on the circuit board. So SW4 for switch 4, switch 5, and switch 6. So the way it should be is switch 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. The way it actually works on this one at least, your guys' may be wired up correctly. For some reason, mine works opposite. So switch one on the panel on the left-hand side, which should be starting at one, starts on this one for some reason. So at first, when I connected everything 
and I plugged everything in. I was tripping out because switch one wasn't turning on my light bar, switch two wasn't turning on my front pads, and switch three wasn't turning on my reverse pads or reverse pods. So, uh, so I tested everything with the voltage meter right here. They're all reading as ground, which was tripping me out also because this was reading as 12 volts, this is reading as ground, and that red slot in there was reading that it is getting 12 volts. The harness inside was reading that it's getting 12 volts. So, um, for some weird reason, switch number six is actually the one that turns on my number one. Why it's like that, I'm guessing somewhere in this harness or in the circuit board, when this was assembled, it was assembled reverse. No big deal. Um, for me, now I just got to switch these because I wanted the big light bar to number one, so I got to switch these to the first one. You have power, then ground, power, then ground, and it's in increments per relay and per fuse. So you have a 40 amp relay, a 30 amp fuse. Um, so each set is for one switch. So one switch, two switch, but mine is working in reverse. So switch one is going to be here, switch two, switch three. So this is the main reason I'm making this video in case you guys are having the same issue. At first, I was kind of rocking my head about this, like, what the hell is wrong with mine? Why is it not working? It's not getting no power to this one, two, or three, the ones I'm trying to use. Then, for some reason, when I was here trying to mess with it, I said, well, let me try turning on all the switches. When I turn on all of them, it worked. So, for some reason, the sixth switch on the right-hand side on the panel works for this one. So, I'm going to switch these over because I want to use the first three, one, two, three. No big deal. It's just, for some reason, this is reversed. Um... So now that I explained that to you, this does come with these crimps, which is pretty cool from Rough Country, so you don't got to take that whole thing off, or you don't have to just strip your wire, slide it in there. You could crimp these on, you loosen that a few turns, slide it in, and slide it, and uh, twist them back on. Um, so you're going to be getting rid of your regular relay. You no longer have a use for the relay. You no longer need a fuse because there's a fuse built into there. All you're basically doing is the power and ground directly from each light is getting wired up to this. So if you want switch, for example, if you want switch five to turn on the front pods, make sure you just wire those front pods together. Um, so that's why this one has two powers and two grounds because that's a pair of pods for the reverse ones too. Two powers, two grounds, because that's a pair. I don't want my left side pod to turn on with one number and then the right side pod to turn on with a different switch. So just remember that when you guys are wiring this stuff up. Um, for tucking the wires, I'm going to end up zip tying everything so it looks a little neater. Um, to get the wires that go to the battery under here, I just took off the clip right here, popped that clip off, lift both relays up, and it was a lot easier than trying to tuck it underneath, especially because you have that box right there. Then I zip tied it to the OEM harness. Make sure that's covered because that is a 12 volt uh, bolt on top of there. I'm guessing if you need to ever connect something else, you have that accessible to you. Um, and I ran these, this one, to a 12 volt to just test it for now. I just added a nut on top of the existing nut. But realistically, you should do it like I did on this side. Take off the nut and put the post and then put it back on. So I'm going to be removing one of these and then uh, putting this on one of those, okay? So... I ended up figuring out what this is for also at the end of Rough Country's uh, installation instructions. Um, they tell you if you don't want your switches to always basically be able to have power, that there's a way they give you an add a circuit to add to your fuse box, which this is one of your fuse boxes. So if you pop these two tabs together and you pull it up, um, it's going to explain what number. I don't know why that's just laying there. That should usually, there's something to do this clips into. But anyways, there should be a specific number that gets ACC, which means it's an ACC power source. So just when you turn your ignition on, then the light bars can turn on. Um, first time you plug this in, you're going to turn on your vehicle for a few seconds. So right now I have extra stuff removed because I'm going to be installing a, a backup camera to the OEM uh, camera too. Um, so I'm not going to turn on the truck right now, but basically when you turn on the truck, you're going to see these blink. So the light's going to blink basically like that. Once it blinks, then that means it's ready to be used. I'm guessing a uh, rough country on the circuit board, something's hooked up so that when it gets 14 volts, which is usually what your voltage runs to once you turn on a vehicle um, because of the alternator. Um, so for some reason, it's, it's programmed, so once you get those 14 volts, that little light on the bottom, they all blink like that. Um, 
then that means it's ready to use. So something on the circuit board is telling it once it gets 14 volts, boom, activate it, let it be used. If you guys didn't know, you have this switch right here. So those switches, if you press that button, these are lit up basically all the time. Or if you do what I do and uh, run it to ACC power source, they'll be turned on if you leave that button on every time your vehicle turns on. If you're leaving it to direct 12 volts uh, and you don't want these lights to be on because you don't want it to drain your battery if you don't drive it daily, just press that button, they'll turn off. Even though they're off, you can still use the switches as you can see. Um, if you turn it on, they light up up here once they're on and once they're off, the bottom part lights up, okay? Um, so as you can see, my pods are on right now. Like I told you, it's wired up reverse for some reason. The pods are to number two, but for some reason on the switch, it lights up as number five. So I'm going to just switch those around so that this could turn on the light bar instead of this one. I want it to be the first three that I'm using for what I currently have on there. So just in case you guys also have that issue, um, at the same issue I'm having with that, that way you guys know it's reverse. So this is actually going to be one, two, and three instead of like it should be one two three um, again just press that if you don't want these illuminated all the time all right you guys so the bracket right here it's slanted down i guess for a reason um, but the screws won't reach so you do have to pull up like i explained to you the only thing is when we're trying to put the roof on right now uh, this one wasn't latching back in because it was hitting so this side's super easy to put pressure on to just pull it downward on this side um, when we were trying to pull down to get this to clear, um, it was just hitting right here. So what I did, put a plastic pry bar, kind of pulled down to give it a little bit of a gap. And while I was doing that, I had my buddy grab this piece and pull down. We had to open this and push the roof up so that we could, so he could fit his hand right here to actually apply some pressure to push down so that this will clip in again. So it's a pretty tight fit, but as you can see, it does work. So. Um, just in case you guys run into the same issue, I explained to you guys what we did to get it to clear. Alright you guys, so since I don't want mine to be a consistent power because my daughter likes pushing all the buttons and stuff in my truck, I'm cutting the red cable and that's what this cable right here from the harness that they give you from our country is, is for. Um, so that you can run it to ACC power source. So now I'm going to plug that back in. I'm going to heat this with a heat gun so I could shrink this. Then I'm going to put that cover back on, zip tie those wires. And the instructions tells you for the fuse. So you're also going to crimp this on on the other side. They give you this out of circuit. They tell you to connect it to uh, M6. So when you look at your chart, M6 is right there. So it should be a uh, second one right here, which is a 20 amp fuse. So we're still going to double check it first. Make sure it is an ACC power source, which means it only gets power when you put the key in the ignition. If it is, we're going to pull this out. We're going to put this out of circuit in there. And we're going to put two fuses. One fuse is going to be for what, that out of, for what the fuse is currently holding. Um, the second one up here is going to be the fuse for that brain um, so that that could get power. So basically, they're each going to have their own separate fuse. Um, and the pictures... So the 20 amp you want on this bottom one um, because that's going to be what was powering the item that was there before. The one up here on top is going to be for the new item that you're installing. They give you a 10 amp, 10 amp fuse, so we're going to try it with that 10 amp fuse first. Um, but in the pictures for the instructions, it shows a 20 amp. So worst case, we're going to carry a 20 amp fuse with us in the glove box. If it pops that 10 amp too easy, we're going to replace that with a 20 amp fuse to each their own. You guys could try it whichever way you want. We're going to put it in this slot if it is an ACC power source. And then basically just zip tie this somewhere right here. And I believe so that this wire doesn't get pinched, we have to slightly uh, notch out somewhere on this plastic. Hey you guys, so the wire you cut, you want to cap it off. You could use like a plastic uh, cap and crimp it. Or what I'm going to do is I'm just going to electrical tape it, not because I'm lazy, but because if I ever want to reconnect it and you use a cap um, and you ever want to cut it, your wire is going to basically be like a quarter inch shorter than what you already cut. So for that reason, I'm just going to electrical tape over it. But either way will work. You just want to make sure that uh, 
it doesn't touch basically a power ground source that it shouldn't. So now that that's good, and um, all right, and then when you cut that wire too, uh, make sure that you don't have any power going to this. So you want to make sure that the the 12 volts is either disconnected here or on the other end where the battery's at. All right, so basically uh, we took out the M6 fuse which was that second 20 amp we'll push this in you're gonna have to notch somewhere out so that this could fit through so this is a better way and the, the only down part is don't notch it out too big you just want to notch it out enough for this wire to barely fit through because if you notch the hole too big basically you're making this where it could get a some type of moisture condensation because as you can see it does have a gasket on here so when it seals it's basically supposed to be pretty much watertight which uh, by adding this to ACC power source that's the one downfall is this has to come out somewhere um, so if you notch something out basically it's not going to be a watertight seal anymore so just take that into consideration when you're adding the add a circuit versus being uh, connected to direct 12 volt alright so as you can see where I notched it out I did it with a Dremel, I just made a slight notch right there for this wire to fit through, like that. Alright you guys, so hopefully this video was helpful for you guys on how to install the Rough Country uh, Rocker Panel 6 switch on your Jeep Wrangler. Alright guys, so as you can see they work with the ACC power source now, so they're on. And when I turn the ignition off right now... They're gonna shut off. Put the key in, turn it on, and you turn it off.